Hey everyone, this is David Brown with the migration update for May 12th, 2024 from the Braddock Bay Hawkwatch. Kim and I started the day around sunrise at the Braddock Bay West Spit. We had a total of 43 species, including a ring-necked duck and two ruddy turnstones. Next, we went to the Owl Woods and we walked the loop. We had 34 species, including two blue-winged warblers, a Cape May warbler, and two bay-breasted warblers. Next, we headed over to Braddock Bay Park, and it was still a bit gloomy and no raptor activity, so I actually sat in the car and read for a little bit, and eventually wandered up to the platform around 10 a.m., and it was starting to clear up. It started out mostly cloudy, and then as the day went on, it became mostly sunny. The winds were primarily out of the northwest to begin, and then shifted to a northeast lake breeze, and then in the afternoon, it shifted back to northwest for a bit before going back to the lake breeze again. Despite the northwest winds, we had a decent raptor flight in the morning, and it was low and mostly overhead. Here's a turkey vulture that gave us a nice look, and we had around 180 turkey vultures today. Here we have a large beautio showing a belly band, dark patagial bars, and a red tail. This is an adult red-tailed hawk. Here we have a raptor that looks dark overall just because it was disappearing up into the cloud layer. We see that it's a small beautio. We see a somewhat short to medium length tail. We see that the wingtips are a little bit pointed, and we see that the tail has a wide white band on it. This is a broad-winged hawk, and we had over 100 broadwings today, mostly in small groups. So first decent day for broadwings we've had in a while. Here we have a hawk high overhead that's shaped like a flying cross. We see that long tail and large head, very straight wings with rounded wingtips. So this is an occipiter. We see orange barring underneath that makes it an adult. And the large head and rounded tip of the tail make this an adult Cooper's hawk. Here's a bird down in the grass that's mostly black. We see some yellow here on the back of the head and also some white highlights. This is a male bobolink. Here we have a decent sized raptor with pointed wings. We should be thinking large falcon. And we see a lot of dark streaking here to the breast. This is a juvenile peregrine falcon. And we watched this bird for a little while and even got to watch it tuck in and stoop as it was hunting. Here we have another red-tailed hawk. Again, note the dark belly band and the dark patagial bars, but this one does not have a red tail. It's more of a plain tail with a little bit of banding, and it does not have the dark trailing edge to the wings, although if you look, there are some feathers growing in that do have that dark tip, so this bird is starting to molt. This morning after Kim and I left the West Spit and when we were probably over at the Owl Woods, someone was birding Braddock Bay by boat and had a nice flock of brant fly over, and unfortunately we missed those. But this afternoon, someone up on the platform spotted this flock in the distance, and this sort of messy, tight flock of geese is typical for brant. And brant seemed to be on the move recently. Um, a lot of the Canada geese that we see migrating, they come through much earlier in the season, right at the beginning of March. So we're not really seeing migrating flocks of geese much at all. Uh, we are seeing things like cormorants migrating, which could be mistaken. But normally when cormorants are flying, they take turns gliding. That's one thing you can look at from a distance to distinguish cormorants from geese. Look for those individuals taking turns gliding for the cormorants. But these birds were just flapping very steady and based on the shape of the individual birds as well as the overall messy shape of the flock rather than a neat V formation, we can identify these as brant. Here we have an adult bald eagle that caught a rather large fish and is dangling it down vertically. And for some reason a couple Caspian terns were unhappy with the bald eagle and kept diving at it, maybe trying to steal the fish, although that's quite a large fish for a Caspian tern to swallow. Here we have a large swallow with a dark head, dark underwings, but a lighter underside to the body and a forked tail. This is a purple marten, and this is either a female or an immature, I'm not sure. Here we have another raptor with a fish. This one is a large raptor with a black and white plumage and very lanky overall. This is an osprey. We had some visitors from Pennsylvania stop by today who watch my videos, and they really enjoy seeing the bald eagles on the river down there, so shout out to them and one more bald eagle. Here's a bird with a two-toned appearance underneath with a dark body and dark leading edge to the wings, but a paler trailing edge, a small reddish head, and a somewhat long tail. This is a turkey vulture, and it looks like this is also beginning to molt. Here we have a large dark raptor with a large head and bill, and a lot of splotchy white underneath. This is an immature bald eagle. 
for the hawk watch today we had 60 species with the main highlight being that flock of around 200 brant altogether today i had 89 species the only new species for the season was brant taking a look at the hawk count report for our migrant raptor totals today we had 181 turkey vultures four osprey 24 bald eagles five northern harriers four sharp shinned hawks two cooper's hawks 113 broad-winged hawks, 17 red-tailed hawks, one kestrel, two merlins, and two peregrines for a total of 355 migrating raptors. That brings the May total to 7,097 and the season total to 59,700. Taking a look at the forecast for tomorrow, it's looking cloudy with showers and thunder possible with a high around 70, winds southwest at 10 to 15 miles per hour, so that's our best wind direction and a pretty good speed. My only concern would be how gloomy and rainy is it going to end up being. That can certainly hold the flight back, especially for species like bald eagles and broad-winged hawks, which are the main ones on the move right now. And my other concern would be if the wind is on the weaker end of that speed, that it's possible that the northeast lake breeze will kick in, in which case it pushes the migration away from the lake shore and shuts the flight down from the platform. So. We're starting out assuming that it's going to be a decent day, but um, it's going to depend on the exact weather, how rainy it is, and what the wind speed ends up being. But that said, their southerly winds overnight should be a really good night for songbird migration. We're right in the peak time of migration. I mean, you can't get any better than this date. Um, there's certainly a lot of rarities that have potential to show up, so it would be a really good morning to be out birding, especially along the lakeshore would not surprise me if some rare birds show up tomorrow in the morning. For Tuesday, they're calling for showers early, becoming a steady rain later, a high in the upper 60s and light north-northwest winds. Wouldn't expect much raptor migration. And for Wednesday, it's looking overcast with a slight chance of a rain shower, highs in the low 60s and winds northeast at 10 to 15 miles per hour. That's an unfavorable wind direction, along with the cloudy skies. Would not expect much migration. All right, well, all in all, the weather turned out to be pretty nice today, and we ended up with a decent raptor flight despite the northwesterly winds, and we had that excitement of missing the brant flock in the morning with then getting our own larger brant flock later on in the day, even though it wasn't a great look. That was a new Monroe County bird for me. In all my years of coming up here, I had never had brant before. I'm excited for the conditions tomorrow. It's looking like our best possibility for a hawk flight out of any of the upcoming days. But again, the weather is a little bit hit or miss with that rain and whether or not the lake breeze will kick in. But it's looking like a really good day to be out birding. Um, these kind of days, you never know what shorebirds are going to get knocked down. There's some weird galls migrating. Someone had a laughing gall from the bay today. So a lot of rare birds that have the potential to show up tomorrow. So I highly recommend if you are able to get out birding, do so, especially along the lake shore. Hope to see you out soon in the field or up on the platform. From Lyco Birds, this is David Brown. Thanks for watching.